Welcome to my first game review. Today I'll be reviewing one of the jewels of my collection entitled The Legend of Dragoon. This game was made by Sony by a staff team of a hundred members and it took three years to make. Legend of Dragoon was released in in between 2000 and 2001. Uh, it was supposed to be the, the rival of Final Fantasy VIII because this game was released right after Final Fantasy VIII came out. Well, I'll leave you with what's left of the opening FMV and right after that we'll get to, to the review. Legend of Dragoon begins when Darth, our leading hero, is heading home from a five-year-old journey to pursue the Black Monster, the creature who killed his parents and destroyed his birth town of Neat. On his way home, he's attacked by Feybrand, a dragon controlled by the Imperial Sandora, a rebel faction in the Serdian Civil War. After Darth gets hit by the dragon, he gets saved by a mysterious female hunter, Rose, who will sometime after be a playable char character and one of the best pe playable characters in the game I might add. When he arrives at his hometown of Celis he finds out that it's been destroyed by the Sandora and that his childhood friend Shauna has been captured and taken to Helena prison. After that he seeks out to, to break her out of prison but in the midst of it he finds, he finds a, a new companion on his journey, Levitz Slambert, who is a, a knight from Basel, under the direct command of King Albert. After that, the plot begins to unravel, and so on and so on and so on. I don't want to bore you with uh, too much information on this. The game takes place in a fictional continent of Andinus. It's geographically a diverse land, with, with each climate zone being a home for a different nation. The game begins in Sertio, which is divided in the west and the east parts. The west has been, has been taken over by the Imperial Sandora, the rebel faction. And while the West still remains under the control of Basil. Moving from Sergio, we have the, des the desert nation of Tiberoa. After that, we got the icy regions of Milesesso. North of Milesesso, we have the holy land of Gloriano. After the death frontier, a barren wasteland full of nothing but monsters and sand. We have nine playable characters, seven of which will receive a Dragoon Spirit. The Dragoon Spirit turns you into a Dragoon, a Dragon Knight. The characters are Dart, the main character, Lavitz, Slambert, Shauna, and these two, due to storyline events, will be replaced by King Albert, and Miranda. There's also Rose, Ashel, Meru, and Kongol. There's a wide variety of villains in this game. A wide, wide variety. But there's uh, two that will be constantly re referred in the game. They are Lloyd and Zeke. One of the strong points of this game is the character development. Since every single character has such a rich development, uh, the, th the game takes some time for the player to, to get to know every single character in the game. Not just the main characters, the ones that you fight with, but also those who you interact with. Okay, maybe not all the characters, just the ones that matter. Besides uh, what you get to know about the characters, as you go along the journey. Right before the end of the game, you have some really intense character development, which I found to be very important to make them look more intense, 
so the player can look at the, at the characters and see part of himself in them. One of the things I like most about this game is the battle system. Why? Because of these. Yes. These are called additions. Additions are like combos, but you just have to press uh, the X button at the right time to make a follow-up combo. Additions are simple to use. The basics behind the, uh, the additions are like this. The more you use them, the, more, the stronger it gets. Some additions level up by increasing the damage you do to an enemy. Other additions just to boost up the SP you win at the end of a combo. Others boost up both damage and the SP. There are many varieties of additions, and each character has his own combinations of additions and such. Although most people find this find this system to be too rigorous and too demanding for a normal player, I actually enjoyed it. I actually liked it a lot, in fact, because, you know, in some RPGs I've played, I almost fall asleep during a battle, and in this game, it's impossible, because if you do, you're dead. Aside from normal battle mode, you got the Dragoon mode. The Dragoon mode is simpler than the normal battle mode. You just have two courses of action to take. You either do a Dragoon attack or a Magic Dragon attack. Each Dragoon has five magic attacks and the dragoon attack is simply uh, a combo that you have to make by also pressing the X button at the right time. The graphics and cinematics were actually pretty well achieved but it's nothing that uh, we have never seen before although I feel like the cinematics could have been done uh, a bit better. Comparing this game to Final Fantasy VIII in the cinematics, I think Final Fantasy VIII. The same goes for the soundtrack. Although The Legend of Dragoon has a beautiful, beautiful soundtrack, it's nowhere near the Final Fantasy VIII soundtrack, which is astonishing. Although I'll, I'll praise this game for the background design, there were some stages of the game where I was just awed by how awesome the backgrounds looked, how well they were designed. Overall, this is an amazing game. People who've n who haven't played it yet don't know what they're missing. And Sony is being an absolute douche and not making either a sequel or a remake for the new consoles. Because this game has a lot of potential and it would make a, a huge su success if it hit the new consoles. Especially if it went to PS3. Overall, I enjoyed this game a lot. I find it to be awesome. The storyline is unique. The character development is very deep. The only thing that uh, this game could have been done better in are the cinematics and the soundtrack. Well, anyway, this game leaves this this game review with a 17 out of 20. This has been Sabitsuita and see ya.